Good afternoon. My name is Andrew Dixon. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Port St. John, and it is my distinct privilege and pleasure to officially welcome Deputy Prime Minister Christia Freeland to our port, Port St. John. We are also joined by MP Wayne Long, Mayor Donna Reardon from the City of St. John, Mayor Brittany Merrifield from the town of Grand Bay Westfield, Mayor Nancy Grant from the town of Rothsay, and Mayor Libby O'Hara, the town of Quispam Sis, and finally Councillor David Hickey from the City of St. John. We appreciate everybody being here today uh, on a beautiful sunny day in St. John. Today we've had a wonderful opportunity to uh, showcase to Deputy Prime Minister Freeland all of the current growth happening at the port with the first part of the West Side modernization wrapping up soon and the enhanced portion well underway. The federal government has injected more than $50 million into Port St. John over the past six years, which has facilitated significant private sector investment from DP World, our terminal operator, our class one rail partners, as well as from the Port Authority itself, of course. This growth has also created hundreds of jobs for our port community. We also spent time with the record-breaking maiden crew, an all-female ocean, ocean racing yacht team on a three-year world tour to raise awareness and funds for their mission, which is access to education for girls all around the world. St. John is the only Canadian stop on the 2022 leg of the tour, and what a great way to welcome the crew with the Deputy Prime Minister in attendance. Now I'd like to pass the podium over to MP Wayne Long. MP Long has been a champion and a friend for our port, and he's helped to secure crucial funding for the infrastructure upgrades, which are helping Port St. John emerge as one of the top ports in our country. Wayne Long. Good afternoon to you all. It's a beautiful, beautiful, after, beautiful, beautiful afternoon. I certainly want to start by acknowledging we are on traditional, unceded territory of the Willistawik alongside of their neighbours, the Pescatumakati and the Mi'kmaq. Today is a great day and certainly want to welcome to our, our regional mayors, uh, Mayor of St. John, Donna Reardon, and a very, very special guest. And, you know, I've always long said that when we have ministers and top people from our government visit my beautiful riding of St. John Rossi, it's a great day, but to have our Deputy Prime Minister here, Christian Freeland, is an extra great day. Of course, we ordered in the beautiful weather. We had a wonderful afternoon with Deputy Prime Minister Freeland. And look, I'll just, I'll leave you with this. When I came and ran from being a private businessman to being our Member of Parliament in 2015, my goal was to work for a government that believed in investing, believed in strong social programs, whether it was $10 a day childcare, the Canada Child Benefit, massive investments in infrastructure. And I knew my job was to go to Ottawa with a plan and a purpose. And that was to advocate for my riding, to talk with ministers and talk about my riding up there and bring much needed federal investment to St. John. And if you look around this riding right now, from the beautiful port, port behind us, where as a federal government we've invested almost $100 million, to right around the horseshoe here, to Fort Latour, which we've built, our investment in waterfront from the Container Village, to the Fundy Key, to the Loyalist Plaza, to major infrastructure work, water and sewer, we have delivered for this riding. So without further ado, I am thrilled to ask Deputy Prime Minister Christia Frillian to come up and, and welcome to our beautiful riding of St. John Rossi. Welcome. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, well, thank you very much, uh, Wayne and Andy, for those kind introductions, for the wonderful 
actually truly inspiring tour of the port and everything you've been doing here. And of course, thank you for organizing the amazing weather. I'm going to suggest that the mayors working together arrange that for us today. Um, I want to begin by acknowledging that the land we're gathered on today is the traditional territory of the Wolastikik. Um, I really do want to thank Wayne, not only for the warm welcome, for all the work he did organizing my trip here today, but exactly as he has said, for doing what a great MP needs to do. And that is understanding your community, working with your community, having a plan for your community and coming to Ottawa and making it impossible for the finance minister not to support that plan for your community. And I have to say, really seeing the incredible work that has been done here at the port, I am so glad we invested those dollars. I think that is money incredibly well spent and I just want to really, really commend the port, the people of St. John for the amazing work you've been doing. Um, I was really glad I had the chance to meet the all-female crew of the Maiden. They've stopped here in St. John to raise awareness about the importance of girls' education and to help encourage more girls and young women to pursue careers in science, technology, engineering, the arts, and math. And there is no better host for them, or for me, than Port St. John. Whether it is shipping, energy, fishing, or tourism, Port St. John is a hub of excellent, well-paying middle-class jobs here in New Brunswick. And I actually heard people uh, were explaining to me today that some people who had left New Brunswick to go work in my original province, Alberta, have come back here to work at the port. I think that is a really inspiring fact. As Atlantic Canada's largest port, as a cornerstone of the New Brunswick and Canadian economies, the work that happens here connects Canada to the global economy and helps supply the goods that Canadians rely on. Et entre la pandémie et l'invasion illégale de l'Ukraine par la Russie, les deux dernières années ont renforcé l'importance de la stabilité des chaînes d'approvisionnement pour le Canada et ses alliés, comme celles qui transitent par Saint-Jean. Les plaques tournant du commerce comme le port de Saint-Jean aident les entreprises canadiennes à acheminer leurs marchandises vers les marchés. Elles contribuent à de meilleurs prix pour les consommateurs, à des étagères bien remplies partout au pays. C'est pourquoi, en mai de cette année, notre gouvernement a annoncé un investissement de 42 millions de dollars dans le port de Saint-Jean. Oui! Et on voit le résultat. Cet investissement va aider à croître sa capacité et améliorer la circulation des marchandises qui entrent et qui sortent du Nouveau-Brunswick. Et plus que jamais, nous dépendons des lieux comme le port de Saint-Jean pour continuer à faire croître notre économie et à rendre la vie plus abordable pour les Canadiens et les Canadiens. Parce que, même si l'économie poursuit son rétablissement après la récession causée par la COVID-19, je sais que l'inflation augmente le coût de la vie des familles du Nouveau-Brunswick et de l'ensemble du pays. We know that inflation is a global phenomenon driven by Vladimir Putin's barbaric and illegal invasion of Ukraine, by China's COVID-0 policies, and by the snarled supply chains that are affecting people and businesses around the world. And I know that Canadians are feeling the impact of that global inflation when they go to buy groceries. I know they feel it when they fill up their cars or trucks with gas. So what is our government doing to help Canadians weather this latest storm? We're doing exactly what we've done over these past two years of the COVID pandemic. We have a plan and we're working together to support Canadians. For the Canadians who need it most, our government has an affordability plan to help directly with the rising cost of living. Our affordability plan includes 
an enhanced Canada Workers Benefit that will put up to $2,400 more dollars into the pockets of low-income families. Cutting childcare fees by an average of 50% by the end of this year. A 10% increase in old age security for seniors 75 and over, which started in July, just last month. A dental care program for Canadians with family income under $90,000 a year, starting with children under 12, and that support will be in place this year. A $500 payment this year to help people who rent and are struggling with the cost of housing. And, of course, our main government support programs, including the Canada Child Benefit that Wayne referred to, the GST credit, the Canada Pension Plan, Old Age Security, and the Guaranteed Income Supplement are all indexed to inflation and will therefore be increasing. For a couple here in St. John, with an income of $45,000 and a child in daycare, this affordability plan could mean roughly an additional $6,150 a year on top of existing benefits this fiscal year. For a senior with a disability in, say, Sussex, she could get over $2,500 more this year than she received last year. And crucially, these measures, the measures in this affordability plan, are not pouring unnecessary fuel on the flames of inflation. They're accounted for in Canada's AAA rated fiscal framework, and they were accounted for in the fiscally responsible budget we tabled in April, one in which we committed to a responsible $9 billion reduction in government spending. Mais pour les Canadiens et les Canadiens qui ont le plus besoin de ce soutien, les Canadiens les plus vulnérables, ces mesures leur permettront de recevoir de l'argent supplémentaire qu'ils n'ont pas reçu l'an dernier. Elles rendront leur vie plus abordable exactement au bon moment. C'est une période difficile pour les pays du monde. Entier. Et c'est sans aucune doute une période difficile pour les Canadiens et les Canadiens. But thanks to the smart, hard-working people of amazing places like St. John, I know there is no country in the world better positioned to make it through these turbulent times than Canada. And I just want to conclude by commending all of the civic leaders who are here today, all of the leaders of the Port of St. John, labor leaders, indigenous leaders, everyone in your community here who has worked together so effectively on this really inspiring expansion of your port. Uh, it is apparent to the naked eye how effectively you are building your community and building your local economy. And I do want to say as finance minister, as deputy prime minister, this is a real contribution to Canada's national economic security as well. So thank you very much, St. John. You have really inspired me today and I look forward to answering your questions. And just give me a chance to fold up my papers so that they no don't problem. fly all over the place. Okay, I'm ready. No, I'm okay. okay. Uh, Tim Heard from Acadia Broadcasting. After you saw the port, did your tour and everything, what are, and the investments that are coming here, or that are just got here as well, with supply chain, grain issues around the world, could you see further investment come to Port St. John and expand it even further? You know, it is a great question. And you know the people who work here at Port St. John, I am sure for them, supply chains have always been sexy. 
But I think it is fair to say, for most Canadians, we haven't really focused that much on supply chains, on containers, on how quickly we can get our goods out to the world, how quickly we can get the world's goods into Canada. I think this investment has come at exactly the right time. I think Port St. John is playing a really important role in unsnarling the world's supply chains. As I said, it's playing a really important role not only for St. John, not only for New Brunswick, not only for Atlantic Canada, but for our whole country. And definitely, this is work that I'm going to continue to follow with very close interest. And it, yeah, just a sidebar, um, yesterday there were sanctions, more sanctions towards Russia. Any further sanctions coming next? Um, I don't have any new sanctions to announce today, but it's a good question. And it gives me the opportunity to be very clear that Canada and our transatlantic partners are not going to lose faith with Ukraine. We are going to stay the course. The people of Ukraine are incredibly brave, incredibly smart, incredibly tough in how they are fighting Putin's war machine. They're doing a great job and they should know Canada is going to be there with money, with weapons, and with continually ratcheted up sanctions pressure on Putin. Thank you. Uh, Sean Mott with the Telegraph Journal. Um, I was just wondering, uh, one thing that's been talked about a lot in New Brunswick lately is the idea of um, LNG uh, export terminal here in St. John. I was wondering um, if you're supportive of that idea, and if so, would the federal government uh, be getting involved with funding or anything like that? I am very familiar with that project uh, and familiar with some of the East Coast LNG projects that are being discussed. And I have talked about them at the G7 finance ministers meeting and directly with my German counterparts. I do think that energy security today more than ever is a question of security full stop. And Canada's really lucky. We have a lot of energy. I think it is a political responsibility for us as a country to support our allies with energy security. This is a very tough moment for many European countries right now as they shift from their dependence on Russian oil and gas. And I think that it's very important for Canada to step up and to say, we're going to help you. We're going to help replace that energy. So yes, I, I think there is a role for the federal government working with provincial governments, working with the private sector, working with our European allies to make this happen. And, and just as a follow do you see that specifically in St. John as a, as a place where that, that could, I guess, manifest? I think this is not the moment to pick specific projects, but on this trip to Atlantic Canada, I will be meeting with some energy leaders. I think it's a very important issue for Canada and the world, and it's important for the federal government to be there. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Lane Harrison, CBC. Uh, there was a report. What's your name? Lane Harrison. Lane. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, There's a report in the Globe and Mail yesterday that. Uh, Ottawa knew that some of the staff at the Ukrainian embassy or Canadian embassy in Ukraine may be targeted by Russia during the invasion, but did not coordinate an evacuation plan for them. So my question for you is, uh, why did Canada abandon its locally engaged employees in Ukraine? So I wasn't familiar with those reports, if they indeed existed. Um, so I guess just to follow up, do you have anything to say about I guess I can tell you more about the report. It was essentially that there was no evacuation plan, that they were told to shelter in their homes, um, and that they were not uh, aided out of the country. So do you have, I guess, anything to say about that, any more to say about that report? I've spoken about Ukraine already, uh, and I, I think I will just say this. Um, for me, the real courage of the Ukrainians in defending themselves and in defending democracy is inspiring and frankly humbling. Uh, I think it's remarkable what they're doing and I think all of us should really pay tribute 
to them. Uh, driving into St. John today, I was um, really happy to see a lot of Ukrainian flags. Um, and one of the mayors is wearing a Support Ukraine bracelet. I'm wearing one as well. I do every day. Um, I think it's important for us as a country to do everything we can to support all the people of Ukraine that we can. And we're never going to be perfect, but we should really, we should really understand that they're fighting a heck of a fight and they're fighting for all the world's democracies and we should support them however we can.